Hi, my name is Rakesh Patiwanda and on behalf of my co-authors, I will present our paper on Autopezo games, which means self-play in Greek. Picture yourself trying to play a round of rock, paper, scissors against your own body. I invite you to take a few seconds and actually try it out. Was it a bit odd trying to compete against yourself? I'll admit, I felt quite peculiar when I attempted it initially. And naturally, we cannot do it because we are mostly in control of both our hands. Then how could we possibly play against our own body? To truly engage in such an experience, we must bridge the gap between the player's physical body and the virtual world. Our community has been pioneering efforts in this direction leveraging innovative movement sensing technologies like PlayStation Move, Nintendo Wii, and many others. For example, in the game Bounden, digital dancing is extended into the physical world as two players twist and maneuver the device between them to match on-screen prompts. But what are the benefits of playing this way? They promote physical activity, they help develop bodily awareness, and they also help players foster knowledge of their own inner self. However, in many digital bodily games, the body acts as input with visual displays serving as output. This dynamic essentially introduces a gap between the player's physical body and the virtual world. Additionally, since players retain full control over their bodies in these games, we miss out on novel playable experiences like the notion of competing against your own self. Our work bridges this divide by integrating the player's physical body and the virtual world by proposing a novel approach which we call the body as a play material. Here, the player's body is used both as input and output. To illustrate this concept, we employ a technology known as electrical muscle stimulation or EMS for short. In our study, participants loan control over one of their hands to our specially designed computational EMS device. Meanwhile, on the other hand, they wear a mobile phone. The phone's accelerometer directs the actions of the EMS-controlled hand. EMS is a technology that can be integrated with the user's body and actuate their muscles to cause involuntary bodily movements by passing a small amount of electricity via the electrodes attached to their skin. We designed three games using this setup. Today, I'll explain our third game, Slap Me If You Can. For details on the other games, please refer to our paper. In Slap Me If You Can, the player aims to playfully slap the hand controlled by the EMS. Successfully hitting or dodging the hit determines the winner. We structured our study into three phases with 12 participants. Phase 1 was a pre-study, focusing on safe onboarding and system familiarization. Phase 2 involved the field study where the participants played the games at their homes for 7 days. Phase 3, post-study, involved conducting semi-structured interviews with the participants. A thematic analysis was conducted to further understand participants' experiences. We identified four distinct player experience themes. I'll highlight one specific sub-theme and its associated design consideration in this presentation. For a complete overview of our themes and design considerations, I encourage you to read our paper. In this sub-theme, participants shared various strategies they employed to learn and adapt to this novel experience. As highlighted in this particular quote, one notable observation is that some participants felt the need to relax their muscles when playing against their own hand. Also, there's an inherent delay before the EMS-controlled hand actuates due to the technology's limitations. During this pe brief period, as indicated in this quote, certain participants attempted to anticipate the upcoming movements of the EMS controlled hand. EMS has an inherent limitation. There is a slight delay in movement when it actuates a person's muscles. However, we notice that participants use this limitation to their advantage and try to anticipate how the EMS might control their hand and what gesture it might perform. So, future designers could consider leveraging the inherent limitations of technology to create meta gameplay situations for players. In closing, I would encourage you to read our paper to learn more about 
designing by using the body as a play material approach. My name is Rakesh Patibanda and I thank you for your time and attention.